Hi, I'm David Smith. This is Samuel Petresky. Sorry, gonna say your name there. <clears throat> I work at Georgetown University. I also own my own, my own digital forensics company. And uh, I'll look at Sam get in. I was gonna. Everything's in the guide. Just read it there. Samuel Petresky, work for Georgetown University as well. Um, I run my own consulting company, mostly in network um, security architecture. So I design big, big stuff that would fit in the enterprise. And uh, we're going to talk to you about uh, forensic methodology here. So the idea is that. So anyway, I came up with this idea. I was actually reading a white paper. And it was a fantastic white paper. And I definitely recommend you go and take a look at it. I put the important things up on the screen. But um, it compared a lot of digital forensic methodologies, broke them up into like a standard phases and which ones have which. And, and, um, <clears throat> and it's, it's just kind of that normal go and collect it and make sure you have your warrants and, and all those types of things. But it did a really good job of just saying, hey, there's so many out there, you know, what's missing? And so a lot of the methodologies, I, I thought none of them out there really were what I taught. I run teams of forensics folks and, you know, I'm always like getting a new guy and, you know, having a good guy that's learned a lot of good things, head off to his own organization or start his own company. And so I found myself in the same little groove of like, here's what I want you to do, and here's how I break it down for you. So I wanted to actually, uh, this was the idea I had, and just, you know, why not take all of these processes and turn them into a real methodology? And I did really in my head say, okay, what's the really difference between a methodology and a process? And so I broke it up. And so what I think I really have is a methodology. So, um to start off, we're going to look at some of the existing methodologies and uh, how they compare and kind of look at what's really good at them. And then uh, we're going to kind of try to show you where our methodology really fits into. So this is the first paper where the idea came from, where Dave was talking about initially. Uh, this is a really good overview paper. So if you want to find out what kind of methodologies are out there, how they uh, propose that the, uh, method, the forensic work works, um, they analyzed about 13 different papers. It's a little bit older now. I think it was published in 2008. But uh, they looked at 13 different methodologies. And they found that different methodologies, methodologies had different number of phases. Some of them had four phases, and some of them, I think, had 21 phases. Um, and so what they did is they um, grouped everything in five common phases uh, on the right-hand side, as you can see there. And then they mapped the existing phases that the methodology had into uh, their four or five phases here and see where they would fit in. And so the conclusion of the uh, analysis paper was really um, most of the methodologies out there would fit within the four phases. Most of them fit into the five phases of um, of their proposed model. But in essence, uh, all the methodologies have the main components there. Who's a Brian Carrier fan? Okay, all right. <laughs> cool. So um, as I mentioned, the different uh, things that what we found is the different methodologies have the same main components. Um, basically, how do you authorize the investigation? You know, do you get the right data? How, how do you acquire the images the proper way? Have it so it's uh, admitted in court uh, later on if you need to. Um, then how do you define the valid technologies or techniques to find the data that you're really after it? And then at the end, how do you produce a report that's really meaningful to the requester and uh, shows that the information that they requested really is there or it's not there? So a uh, quick uh, show of hands, how many of you are just getting into for forensics, like uh, just getting there? Excellent. How many of you just do forensics kind of regular basis, um, medium level kind of? And how many of you are experts? Do this in and out all day long? Okay. <laughs> Excellent. So um, I think our presentation here is mostly going to focus on the beginner and the in, um, intermediate level of uh, uh, people that know how, what to do with forensics and show them some uh, tools and methodologies what they can use there. And then from the experts, we really want their input because um, at the end of the day, really this whole methodology is how an expert uh, digital forensic analyst it has the conversation within their head when they're analyzing a methodology or when they're performing a forensic job. So we really want to kind of have pick their minds, get the information from them, and then have that information available for everyone to be able to go through the process and at the end of the day, we should all be able to produce the same type of result. 
So a um, couple other methodologies that we looked at, uh, really what's the digital and forensic methodology, the Department of Justice has a pretty good uh, process overview. They outline uh, seven different processes there that they think or they uh, want to use in their uh, methodology. And so they have everything from obtaining the data, getting the proper um, authorization, getting the requests done properly, acquiring it, extracting the, the important or the relevant data out, um, analyzing it, and then producing the report, and then kind of overview of the whole process, what worked, what didn't work. And so they go into a little bit more detail into each phase and uh, have a pretty good flow chart. I'm not going to go through them, but this is something if you're interested in figuring out what their processes are and what they recommend of doing, it's, it's pretty neat. And so they have the preparation and extra extraction phase. Uh, they go through the whole flow there of how, you do, how do you go through the whole process of getting the data the proper way and acquiring it. And then the second is the identification. So we have the data now, but how do we find out what's really important for the case type that we are working on? And then the third one is really the analysis, right? We got the data, we have the information there, but now uh, we need to analyze it to see really what's in there. And so their iterative process is pretty, uh, pretty good here into going through all the steps of who, what, where, what, you know, how, and uh, all the other processes to get the right information there. This mic? Yeah. yeah. So, um, kind of a conclusion of the overview. Uh, there are really good processes out there or methodologies that uh, have been documented. There are a lot of white papers that, uh, if you really are getting into this area, I would highly recommend reading them. They're very valuable. Um, the integrated digital investigation process, uh, they have. Uh, a really nice uh, paper out there that uh, outlines the whole uh, methodology that they recommend. There is a digital forensics research workshop that they uh, publish different papers all the time. And um, they also, you know, talk about those five phases that we mentioned initially. And then um, the enhanced uh, in integrated digital investigation process, they even have a dynamite phase. I love that. I actually wrote that line. <laughs> How cool is a methodology that has a dynamite phase? Wow. <laughs> So anyway, so that was kind of the overview, and what we want to get into is um, what are the problems with digital forensics? Why is it hard? Why are there experts and, and people have a hard time picking it up and learning it? And I think the number one answer is that it's an open solution set, right? There's many, there's many ways to find the answer that you're looking for, and I talk about a few of those in a little bit, but it's just, there's many, many ways of solving. It's a lot of self-teaching and just sitting to it, right? You can sit there, you can, expert will take two hours, and somebody who's just learning it may take 12 hours, whatever. But a lot of it is just sitting there. You're like, I'm gonna run this registry. Oh, that didn't really pay out for me. I'm gonna, you know, run all the link files. I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. And then, uh, it actually takes a lot of discipline. So kind of one of the differences I see when I, when I see beginners and I see experts is that the experts are really disciplined. They're like, I'm not gonna do keyword searches on all these terms because I know it's gonna produce you know, two million hits and I'm not gonna cycle through them, right? So it's, it's, it's that patience, that, it's that determination that uh, stay on target and I just had to say it. And uh, you also have to do a lot of learning while you're sitting there and there's gonna be something new, right? So the first time you got a job that had a Vista shadow, right? And then, you know, you're like shadow copy and you're like, oh great, how do I do this? And you're looking up on Sands or trying to talk to Rob Lee or something like that. So uh, it, you gotta learn new things while you go and you gotta be quick and you already have to have the foundation. So it's not a big time. And kind of where we got into the expert is, all of these things improve over time. So the more you do, the easier it is next time. It's, I've already done this registry report and I know it's not gonna give me what I want. And, and you know, Red Ripper over access data, registry, right? You know, which one is going to do the right thing for me? Should I build my own custom templates? I don't know. It's just, these are things you learn. So the open solution set example I always give, I used to give another one and then I read to Brian Carrier in 2008 and he actually used this one I liked a lot better. But you arrive in the break room, there's five people drinking coffee, the coffee pot's empty. You know, how do you determine who drank that last cup of coffee? It's an open solution set, right? You got to think there's a hard grilled veteran detective out there that could bust that case in five minutes and me, right? I, I don't know, Jack. Uh, you know, it might take me five hours. But uh, anyway, anybody want to give me an idea of how do I determine who drank the last cup of coffee? Right there. Ask them, okay. Interview, that's in there. All right. So this is my first round. Temperatures, the amount of coffee in each cup. The strength of each coffee, right? It's gonna be stronger at the end. You guys wanna keep going? I got about 10 of these. This is one of the questions I ask everybody who ever works for me. Like, give me something new. What's that? 
Okay, they're, they're right. There could be a six cup of coffee out there. Amount of coffee grounds, right? You know, hopefully there's more at the bottom, so the last person might have some more. Obviously, there's interview, uh, interview group, interview individuals. Yep. Video. There you go. Does video exist? <laughs> Develop a timeline, right? You know, measure the temperature of the cup versus the temperature of the coffee. That was one I got a little while back. That is actually from the yeah, Brian Carrier example. He's actually doing it for a different reason about the statefulness of computers. But uh, yeah, offer reward. I like that one too. So it's really great. I get some all new ones and uh, I'd like to add them. I don't have them all listed. I keep a little low wall of uh, this example. But uh, it just kind of shows that there's many, many ways of doing it. And how do we get the most optimal? How do I become that real detective, right? <laughs> no, last one? Yeah, that one's fine. <laughs> We were trying to come up with off the wall at some point, I think over a beer, and uh, I was like, we're just going to hold them, right? It doesn't have a good payoff because it might be a really, really long time. But anyway, the point is, is there a combination that can produce a higher probability answer? You know, what can I do? It's always tough to get like the smoking gun that's 100%, but you know, you get enough, enough data, enough information to draw conclusions and support those conclusions, conclusions, you're pretty good to go. Be efficient. And this is what experts do, right? So these guys right here in this row, they're all sitting together. They've probably done a ton of these things already and say, this is enough to provide the conclusions that I need. Let me know when we switch. And then this is also another, it's a thought experiment, um, kind of the same line where I'm saying this is why we did this and this is why I came up with some of these things. But if we took three different skill levels, let them talk to the requester, ask them any darn question they want to ask them, get a timeline and go do it, what would we really expect if we had an expert, uh, kind of somebody that's been doing it for two, three years, and somebody that's pretty new? You know, what are the results going to show? How varied are they going to be? And of course, that's what I'm trying to fix, right? So if we gave them 20 hours and said, oh, you know, forget unlimited time, you've only got 20 hours to produce a report, you know, are the findings going to be different? You know, is the expert going to knock it out in two hours and go drink some beer for the rest or what? And then drop it into eight hours because that really happens in real life. I get things and they're like, we need an answer by the end of today. Right? And does that mean I'm going to do, you know, super timeline, which is going to generate for six, seven hours? No, it doesn't. So anyway, um, where we fit in, and this is for the analysis phase, we don't, we're not really going to focus on the, what the methodologies do right now. I mean, they do a great job of telling you to go get the data and to grab the data, but when you get to the analysis phase where we put up that DOJ and they were like who, what, when, where, and artifacts and all that good stuff. How can we do a better job of maximizing our time with the requesters, right? I mean, a lot of places have forms and things like that. It's, it's really hard to have an interaction. I think the biggest thing for me in original digital and forensics investigations is getting that right initial contact down, right? They're going to come in there and say, this is what I think I want. And you're going to go in there and say, this is what I can do. But how do I maximize that? How do I really get, like, these are the goals? And how do I come in there with some pre-knowledge of what case types are or what exactly they're asking for? So these were kind of our goals and the questions that we had as we went. And can we really achieve consistent results in the field? You know, I think we can get better, but, you know, actually every consistent? No. So here's what we came up with. Um, and again, this methodology is just an overview. Sam's going to get into a little bit deeper. But we have really set it up so it's part expert system, part process. So when you go in and you're talking to them, we've got, we've got a tool that we're working on. We really wanted to have it done before we came here, but uh, it didn't happen. Um, but anyway, it's got case types. And a case type might be compromised machine or intellectual property. And on there, they're going to have common case goals. I mean, these are the things that you see all the time. I want to know if this document left or, you know, I want to know who this person emailed and all those good things. And so you start with that case type so you can go in there with a little bit of knowledge or have it on hand when they start to tell you what they want. Um, we broke it out into three. The quest is going to want something. Um, you're going to have common things. And then there's also going to be analysts developed because during that initial pre-analysis phase, the last thing you really want is you know, that requester coming, getting your report after all this work and saying, oh, you know what, I forgot to ask you. I want to know if this, this malware compromised any of my other systems. You know, so that's why, you know, you got it in front of you. It's going to be a common case goal for compromised systems. Do you want to know if there's additional exposures? Uh, once you get that, it's golden, right, to get the agreed upon case goals. You've got to walk away with it. It's got to be solid. It's got to be consistent. It's got to be <laughs> just completely understood by both sides. Because if you go out and if you're working a case for a lawyer or something like that and then bam, you give them what they want and he's like, great, I can't use it, right? You know, I really needed to know if these PDFs ever existed. So if you can't get that, you're just, you're in big trouble and you're going to have to go back and you're going to have unhappy customers because they're spending a lot of money. So anyway, uh, by developing the required list and the beneficial list, you can provide a case estimate. And that's something I really like because 
trying to get better at case estimates is a really, really big deal for me um, because you get people, you get these expectations. If you can be as you know as close to correct as possible, then you know you're not really having people that are like I thought it was only going to cost a thousand dollars, or you know I thought it was only going to take ten hours, and 